All right. Uh, who who wants to start introducing themselves? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say that. Well, yeah, I, I can just start. take it. Um, my name is Matthew, and I am uh, currently located in Lund. I am part of Life Examined here. Nice. My name is Joshua Bronson, and I am also part of Life Examined, and I am in Gothenburg. And my name is Miriam, and I am also in Gothenburg. Nice. And uh, we Life Examined is all about helping people improve their lives by deepening and awakening their philosophical ethos. And philosophical ethos is just the way in which their character, the decisions flow out of their philosophical um, ideas. And then those are just uh, ideas that relate to philosophical issues. And our, our long-term vision is that we want to see a world where, where people take it for granted that philosophical practice is an essential part of their well-being and of the well-being of society. So that's what we're, we're all about. But today we're going to demonstrate that with a, with a thought experiment. So Miriam, tell us what we're going to do. And a few cups of coffee. And a few cups of coffee. <laughs> yes. Philosophy goes well with coffee. Um, yeah, so, so we're using today a thought experiment that is designed to help you find your values. Um, yeah. And it goes like this. What would you do? <laughs> it's quite simple. What would you do if you had 100 million in the bank? Hmm. Uh, that's just to say if you had no money concerns whatsoever, if you could do anything. So the answer is not uh, I would quit uh, working. Uh, that's like a negative statement, but but a positive one. What would you do? So what would we do? Mm. What would Life Examine do mm. if we had a hundred million in the bank? Mm. Good. So we're, we're turning it in on on Life Examine as a group. So what would we do as a group, not us individually per se? No, we can do that no. another time. Sure. Um, yeah, I I do it all the time. <laughs> I love <laughs> the experiment. What would we do? Um, uh, yeah, so what would Life Examine do? We'll, so, okay, so we'll take turns and yeah. and we'll help each other uh, think out loud and uh, sort of process our own thoughts uh, yeah. by asking like open, nice questions. I mean, can I connect this back to what you said in the beginning? So, I mean, it, it seems interesting that, that the purpose of this is to try and tease out our value. So what is it that... What is it that we are valuing when we try to walk through this thought experiment? What is it that's important for us? Yeah. I'm assuming that's that's what we're going to be shooting for. Yeah, what's important yeah. for us? What do we want to do? What? How do we want to? Uh, what do we mean when we say um, philosophical ethos and things like mm. that? You know, mm. It's, it's sure. so easy that it just becomes a lot of words. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. So what mm. what would we do? Uh, with a hundred million. Okay, so I'll just say some things and then we'll see where that goes. I actually didn't prepare this very much because <laughs> I don't, I didn't want to be reading. That's uh, good. Notes. That's good. Yeah. And I figured uh, the whole, the whole idea is that we should help each other think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. The thinking Philosophy together. Philosophy on the fly. Not... Improvisation here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. um, so uh, with a hundred million, we could help a lot of people. We could yeah. uh, take them on a cruise. We could take the whole world on a cruise. Well, um, the whole world, maybe not. There's a lot of people in the world. <laughs> I mean, the philosophically inclined part, English speaking. Yeah. There's only about 10 people there, so. <laughs> <laughs> we could go forever, 40, 40 year cruise. Yeah. But that's, uh, okay, so. Uh, then we could do one thing, but okay. So we want we want to help some. People. We want to help people, but how do we want to help them? Mm -hmm. uh, we can give if we have a lot of money. We can give things for free, uh, but only until the money is gone. So right. it's not like a, um, uh, right. I'm right. stuck already. What would so, I do? Yeah, I mean, can I jump in here? I mean, so this is, I think, seems to be important that you're you're thinking in terms of sustainability. If we have, yeah. if we have money, I mean, it's we're not talking about infinite amount of money, but there, we've got to do something with it in life exam that's sustainable. We're not going to go out and buy five Ferraris, uh, drive them around town, get some free advertising with that, uh, and then that'll be it. Like we need some sort of vision that's sustainable, right? That's I think there's a value in sustainability that is important for what you would do with the money sustainability that's like one value already yeah it is, it is it is well actually it's a good it's a good value it's a way of uh thinking about um that, that we want the organization to continue so we want life examined to continue we don't want to burn it all up in 
a couple years. I mean, you could go through a hundred million dollars, I suppose, right? I mean, like like Matt said, you could buy everybody Teslas and 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 just buy houses. I mean, you know, right? see, so you, uh, you could use the money unwisely, but we want to use it wisely in order to continue um, reaching the the goal that we have for life examined. And so if our goal right, is right. to both help people, mm-hmm. but it's also to Im- improve their philosophical ethos, right? So we want to do th- we we'll use that money in ways that is most effective to meet that end. But here's what's interesting. I mean, in uh, talking about this, yeah. we're you were, we're not talking about life examine for the sake of life examine. I mean, one of the no. problems with organizations no. is after a while, organizations lose the vision and the, organ- the, no. the purpose of the organization is to, uh, is to keep itself going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I yeah. think, uh, Miriam, you said it really well. I mean, yeah. the, the vision, I think, is to help people. However that looks, we can talk about that a bit more. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's easy, I think, when, when you have resources as an organization is to mm. just try to have the organization survive. But that doesn't seem to be the goal that we have. I mean, sure. of course, it's the the survival of the organization is a means to an end, but a, a different yep. kind of end. That's 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 really good. So we so we don't want uh, just to cont- like a bureaucratic process, right? We right, 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 right. <laughs> we we make we make events. We 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 do things that that bring people in to have discussions. Maybe we could do larger events if we had so much money. We could make them cheaper for people to come to maybe or or we could we could make different products and so on, but we could set up these systems. And if we only thought that the money was allowing the systems to continue more effectively and larger without thinking about what the goal of the systems was, then we would just be continuing a bureaucratic process, right? We'd just be right. building it larger more complex and it would be doing more things but we wouldn't and it would just continue on with inertia it right, would just continue right. moving but we don't right. want to just continue continue moving in a certain direction just because we're going in that direction no no another thing we could do is we could employ people yeah uh, we could we could give ourselves um excellent salaries yeah. and uh, employ other people to um also sort of spread philosophy as a way of life yeah. so what uh, but what would we uh, require of them with like some kind of mm. uh, uh, some kind of similar values right and mm. and then some kind of uh, um, education so we would it yeah. we want life life examined to be about education like the kind of mm. life education right right, right. yeah absolutely and actually, let me let me jump in on that because um, when when I received this question, and I have also haven't prepared a whole lot, so it's kind of improving here. But I, I've thought a lot about uh, sort of the human resources part of this. I mean, life mm-hmm. examined is something that we we can't really automate. I mean, we no. we can't we can't do examination of life with the purpose of helping ourselves and others to ask important existential questions in a way that help us live better. We can't have automation or robots do that. So I think it's it's really important that that a central part of the vision is to create a, a, a network of mm. people who are willing to engage yeah. with these questions and to carry on this vision. Uh, and then in this way to go out and to meet people. I mean, it's mm. it's very interesting how uh, there's been a sort of kickback in our digital society towards more and more towards analog, towards face-to-face interaction. I say that kind of goofy when we're here, sitting here on Skype <laughs> doing this, right? Uh, but, but but still, I mean, uh, this is because of our limitations. But there there is something uh, fantastic about getting together in a, uh, in a group of people face-to-face yeah. with this is analog uh, embodied interaction and I think yeah. that's something to build upon uh, is to create a, a group of people who actually get together meet together engage with each other brainstorm uh, that would be I think yeah. a really good way to use mm. 100 million so uh, in yes. building up that kind of human network so can I uh, enter in there because I think uh, <laughs> the the I mean, our tagline, right, is life examine live interactive philosophy. So, right. so our our aim is to do live interactive events. It's exactly what you just said, Matt. To to bring people together because in that interaction, in the in the dialogue, there is something really important that happens, mm-hmm. and it's and it's hard to have spaces for that to 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 transpire. But 
with resources, you can you can use tools that facilitate that in much better ways. So, for example, with YouTube videos, with maybe better quality YouTube videos, like better cameras and so on. I mean, like there's all kinds of ways that you could facilitate that in a much better way, which which allows more people to enter into it. Like mm -hmm. you said, Miriam, employing people, people right. are ex expensive, right? But if you're going to do good events, you need people involved. You need to be able to pay people. You need to be able to bring people in. And, and you know, we could we could grow the events and make them so much more interactive and exciting the more resources we had. So a hundred million dollars would be fantastic. But if so, <laughs> so let's say we take uh, we have a hundred million dollars. Yeah. So we book uh, the entire uh, the greatest stadium that we have. Yeah. Oh. Um, and then uh, we have very good microphones so that our voices can, I mean, you can see oh. how that's not yep. in line with our values anymore. Because uh, which, which we lost part the connection. Uh, mm. If we just try oh. to make it as big as possible, like we, okay. we, yep. we rent Ullevi and we have yeah. free tickets for everyone. So we fill it <laughs> with 70,000 people. Um, so we have a lot of yeah. people together, but that's no longer what we were looking for. We were looking for the uh, connection. Right. Yep. Mm. Yep. So right. if we have money, how do we, how do we do that? What, how, right. How, how right. Does money even relate to connection? Well, I think. You, I mean, you're describing Miriam. You're describing live philosophy, but not necessarily live interactive philosophy. Good. Uh, it's those three parts that are really important. Um, mm. And sorry, Josh, I cut you off there. Oh no. Yeah. No. That that's that's absolutely right. I mean, I think money does. But just relating to your, your last question there, Miriam, I think money does relate, but it depends on how it's used. Mm. So so money how can. Well, so look, look, think about think about a simple relationship, <laughs> like, well, maybe not simple, but a simple, um, yeah, context where you've got just two people, right? If you, if you, uh, money is relevant in a number of ways. I mean, if you go out on a date, you're using money to facilitate a connection, right? You're using resources to facilitate connection. You don't have to go on an expensive date, right? You could just go for a walk, but, but at some point money comes into the picture because when we use things, when we do things around in, in the world, right? We need money to be able to facilitate that. So it's the I same thing with an organization. Sort of washing our clothes before. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. But I think, I mean, there's a, a strange equivalency, um, especially in our in our time of time and money, right? I mean, time is yeah. money, that sort of cliche we've yeah. heard all over. Uh, and I think that's that, that's an important piece of this is that what, what money resources would do for Life Examine is it would free up the time necessary for the human actors to be able to engage. So I could imagine something like this, that we don't do Ullevi 30,000 people, but what we do is we have a stable group of uh, philosophically trained people whose task uh, is to focus on researching, preparing uh, for the live interactive events where th then we come to these events and that's where the engagement happens because that's that's where the Socratic aspect of this happens. There yeah. have been so many events that we've had in, in the last uh, couple years uh, where Oh, actually, no, I shouldn't say so many. I should say every single event we've had where I've left after the evenings oh. more enlightened myself because of the nature of the interactive dialogue. Uh, and I think it's <laughs> focusing on that, the Socratic aspect, requires that we have people who have the time to be able to prepare and to come to these events. Uh, I mean, as we know, there's, a, there's about... If we take a scale of a hundred of preparation for every life examine event, I might prepare a hundred and we maybe use one percent of that. And that's good because that's the nature of the live interactive events. But to prepare a hundred still requires a lot of time and energy. Yeah. And if we could use resources to free up people to prepare this broad swath of material, and ideas and brainstorming, then then when we get together, then it's easier to jump around and to follow the different threads that happen in the interactive element. And the preparation that they do mm. is, uh, back to the connection and the, the human aspect, mm. the preparation that we do, uh, and they and all of us, uh, has to do with what is relevant for the people we are interacting with. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. It's very context specific. Yes, it's very yeah. specific to the context. Yeah, absolutely. And it's very human and personal, and it's like this yeah. um, uh, philosophy as as a radical subjective experience. Right, and that's I mean that's I mean this is what makes this thing so much different than when you go to a lecture. You have a lecturer who's prepared the material. You sit down, they present it. You receive it, you leave. Maybe you can ask some questions. There's some dialogue afterwards, but oftentimes the presenters just answer the questions they want in the way they want anyway. But 
I mean, the, the, the vulnerable aspect of this is when we enter an event, it can go anywhere. And that's super exciting to be a part yeah. of because that's really philosophy as it plays out, I think, in the most authentic, genuine form is, it is we follow the train of thought wherever it goes. And that takes a ton of preparation to be able then to back off and let the thing grow organically. So can I just uh, see if I understand what you're saying here in terms of using the money, right? So, so the thought experiment that we're dealing with now is what would Life Examined do with $100 million and where would we go with that? And one of the things you're saying, Matt, is that we could use that money to prepare. I mean, I mean, right. well, for us, but also if, as we bring more people into the organization, it takes time, which is costly, right? It takes time to prepare for an event. Not just not just the practical details like food and, and booking places and all that stuff, but also preparing the content. Mm -hmm. So content takes resources. It takes money. Takes right. money to, to prepare good content because you have to you have to be able to spend the time to do it. I so mean, that's one yeah. way that the money is relevant. Maybe a, a good metaphor and image for this is is something like this that that what we what we do as as organizers in life examine is we mm. we set the stage, we put up the props, we we yeah. set the stones and the houses and things there. We get the mm. stage set, and then we ask people to come up on stage with us mm. and improvise. And we begin to improvise yeah. in relation to the props, uh, yeah. and, and in relation to the stage we set. But then it develops in relation to that. But it still requires a, a good amount of time to set the stage. Uh, and that's really important for good improvisation. I mean, good yeah. improvisation always happens within boundaries. It's not yeah. entirely off and free. There's certain boundaries that we have to set up. And that requires time and energy. And, and that requires yeah. that would require then resources. And yeah. ideally, it'd be great to have a whole army of uh, philosophically minded people who are working behind the scenes to yeah. try and ensure that when people come to a life examine event, the stage is, is set and then we can play. Good, good. Can we, yes. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Mary. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking when we said before, it's uh, f uh, money will free the t time to prepare content. Good. I'm thinking also that uh, money will free. Um, uh, the time to educate uh, ourselves and uh, other people, many, many other people, to to hold space rather than for other people's content. Mm. You see what mm. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So that so that we are able to um, to re the stage that we set is the uh, philosophy bowl where we mm. uh, invite people to to come in with yeah. their stuff, with the stuff that yeah. engages them, their kids or their work or yeah. their whatever life situation right. they're in. Right. Right. Yes. And because that's we, what's interesting. That's what's yes. philosophically interesting. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And we have to, we want to, I want to be the best person to um, hold space for conversations like that, to mm. be able to bring philosophy to whatever people are bringing. <laughs> it's an airplane. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or a helicopter. A helicopter. <laughs> yeah, a helicopter. Uh -huh. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were in the flow, yeah. Mary. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so the, I was in Florida, and so was was the helicopter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but to to um, yeah, uh, to be able to um, I read this article that said something like leadership mm. is being able to stand in the unknown, mm -hmm. and that is the kind of leader I want to be, and and the kind of leader that I want the other life examined collaborators to be. Yeah. To be able to stand in the unknown and to weave the, the philosophy like the wisdom seeking aspect of everything, to, right. to seek the wisdom in everything. Right. That's what right. I would do. Right. If we had 100 million, I would make sure we get the best training to do that. Right. And I don't even know what that is, but it's something that has to do with like Socratic, deliberative mm -hmm. conversations, mm -hmm. listening Good. skills, like active listening. So, so that 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 just sparked my mind thinking in this direction, or, or rather, we could we could we could start thinking in multiple directions, right? So, if our our vision is uh, a world where people take it for granted that philosophical practice is essential for well being, right. there's a lot of ways to to impact that. In, in a way, it's impacting the way in which the general populace thinks about well being. So right. one way of doing that is by holding events. And I mean, that's our core center. That's what we've done for quite a while. That's the core of what we do, live interactive philosophy. But there are a lot of things that could support it, such as books, 
articles, you know, TV appearances, like all all these other kind of things that might expand that. And and we're trying to do that now with our YouTube channel, right? So there's different ways of expanding that, and there's different ways of expanding that that would that would take resources to expand into. So something like um, you know. Uh, Printed material, books, courses, things that might right. be something that we could send into places. But also, just like what you said, Miriam, we might be ourselves be able to become uh, an institution that would train people to do exactly what you just said, to, right. to lead dialogical discussions in complex areas like um, interfaith dialogue or things like that that are extremely difficult, in, mm. especially in a mm. place like Sweden. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. might be able to start training people to do that which would spread the idea that philosophical yeah, practice is interesting even more uh, I interesting i mean I, I like i like what you how the way you're describing it because miriam i mean you're bringing an, an element that i wasn't thinking about and that's that's that what we're trying to do is empower people to be philosophical leaders of sorts i mean the idea of empowerment is is we want to help people to be able to do philosophy for themselves and to then take it out uh, into the rest of the world. Um, and that idea of empowerment, I mean, that's, that's a really important part of it, uh, which incorporates this idea of leadership that you're talking about. Yeah. Philosophy as empowerment, yeah. as emancipation, mm. uh, from like ways of life that are not suited to you and not beneficial to you or your family or your workplace. These things, that's what we want to do, right? But if we can think, uh, bigger than um, uh, paying for print material and stuff, what could, mm. what we, could we do with a hundred million? Or we could... Are we speaking about like crowns here or dollars? <laughs> we're talking about, uh, we're just, we, you can say, we can say like a thousand million or whatever. Like the, the whole point is <laughs> a lot of no money. limit. There is always more um. money. We could rent, I would like to rent a castle. Rent a castle and have like a weekend workshop and mm. then the next mm. week as mm. well. And the uh, you know something like that that would be wonderful. I ooh, I would like to see us. I mean, we've been talking about this idea of uh, as developing your life mm. exam. What we do is yeah. is more interactive events where they are in fact more immersive. Uh, mm. I would love to see us move in a direction of doing live, interactive, immersive philosophy, where you actually mm. you come and you join us and you immerse yourselves in in this uh, philosophical practice. Something like maybe something like a retreat, uh, yes. because the the problem with with the events we do is we we come, people are here for three hours or two hours, and we have these incredible conversations and dialogue, and people are super excited, and then we say, "All right, we're done." Mm. See you Go next home. time. <laughs> Go home, right? And and what we're what we're missing is the immersive element where people can stay and marinate in these ideas and work through them. And of course, we do that after the events. There's usually, I mean, we have people that stay for an hour, an hour and a half afterwards, uh, who want to continue the discussions and dialogue. But think if we could have life examined uh, where we have an element of it that's immersive, and then we could have you know we could have retreats and things like that where we could disappear to a castle, for example, and or do a train it. ride. Yeah, or a Orient ride. Express, three weeks right. to Something Istanbul. Something like that, <laughs> right? Where you have an immersive <laughs> philosophical encounter that incorporates all yeah. these elements. But um, the question is, would there be a murder on the train? No, there wouldn't. It's already <laughs> been done. It's already been done, okay. Yeah. But I was okay. thinking, that the way I was Im imagining it was um, the philosophy of not being in one place, but uh, like following the landscape and yeah. also seeing what emerges. Im immersing and emerging and... Yeah. All these are wonderful the words. peripatetic aspect of philosophy and movement. We were in, in this on our last uh, uh, body. Yeah. Somatic aspect. Somatic, right. Somatic aspect. peripatetic. Those are those are both really good. But I think I think the key thing that money, the way that money does that, right? So so we could do one-off events. We could do a retreat. We could do things like that. But the way, the way that thinking of it as an organization, right? What we would have to do is in invest in in structures. Uh, and invest in people. So we need to hire people. We need to hire an events coordinator. We need to hire somebody who is good at, um, you know, admin, design, <laughs> finance, right? Things yeah. that we're not. Things that I'm <laughs> terrible at. <laughs> <laughs> but but I think that's really I think that's really essential, right? Like if we're going to have an organization that is able to, because we talked about sustainability earlier, um, and of course we, the thought experiment breaks down maybe at this point, because. It can't just be an unlimited amount of money because an organization has to function with with money that comes in and goes out and right. I mean, like there's a it has to function. 
And it's it's good. It isn't an unlimited amount. That's I mean, right. It's, a limited right. funds is kind of like death. It, yep. it gives us a reason to live life better. And then same thing with yeah. an organization. Limited funds force you to really prioritize and to think Absolutely. seriously about how you use your money. Absolutely. That, I think that's exactly right. So so and, and the sustainability part is really essential. So so organizing something like I think this idea of like a train ride, philosophical train ride is, is a brilliant idea. Uh, but we in order to make it happen, we would have to, if we had, in order to make it happen, right, we'd have to figure out all of the costs, how it would go together, how people would get there, how they would get back, all of those details, right? And that's a lot of, that's a lot of work, which costs a lot of money. But, but if you can have it, if you can have it function and have uh, a revenue, right? You have, you have money that comes in that then pays for it to go on the next time. You can continually improve. You can make small improvements. So each year you get a, a I don't know, better train ride and it's organized better and you have more and interesting I mean, events and so on. Yeah. And, and the thing is with the train ride, I mean, I love the idea of a train ride and trips, <laughs> travels, you know, I just want to do it now. Um, but the, the point with philosophy as a way of life isn't yeah. to get away on a train ride. Um, all the time, yeah. but to mm. bring it to where you are, right. where you are. Right. It's not escapism. Like, yeah. Yes. Um, that is welcomed. Uh, you know, sometimes it's like, sometimes a, it's needed. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. Like, like a holiday is also needed and the courses are needed to, to grow and everything. Um, but what we want is, um, to, to educate in such a way that, uh, that our vision of philosophy as a way of life, that, that it is enhanced really mm. and not just for these when you go away right we right. don't want to be a, we, we don't want to be um well, I mean, we want to be uh, like we always say in the uh, in our events that we want to be a, a place where the um homo philosophicus gene gets turned on right. because we know right. from epigenetics that that's how it happens yeah. to genes they get turned on and under yeah. certain uh, Context, conditions yeah, yeah. yeah. But then we want when it's turned on, we want to also aid the uh, the the way they they start to flourish and grow, right. you know. Right. Yeah. So I mean, we we talk about this as well in our in our events that that uh, oftentimes we think about it in terms of a circle. We start we start at this place and we take this journey mm -hmm. and we come back to the point we started. But that's not exactly what we're doing. It's it's not it's not a circle in that sense. It's more like a spiral that we're Good. we're we're starting at one point and the idea is hopefully we're digging down and we're getting a bit more depth. We're ending up in the same place, but now with a bit more depth, oh, right? Yeah. So when we when we return, when we go back to our jobs, when we go back to our parenting, when we go back to uh, whatever it is we do, uh, we've hopefully made this journey with the intention of then digging down a bit deeper. Yeah. And like another dimension. Yeah. yeah. Returning to our, the same place, but with a different kind of depth. Well, that's that's the awakening and deepening philosophical ethos, and that's exactly what you just described, right? I mean. If you're able to do your parenting or your work out of a better understanding of why you're doing it, so you understand your values better, you understand how they hang together better, you're able to explain them better, right? I mean, uh, that that deepening, that going down one layer, that's that's the ethos that that right. we're hopefully awakening and and deepening. Right. And w one of the things that's interesting with that, in that we've seen in our events a lot, is that everybody has an ethos. Everybody has. They, they, they make choices. They, they they do things in their lives for some reasons, but mm. oftentimes mm. they're unclear on what those reasons are, and so on. And I mean, we are too. For somebody times. else's reasons. I yeah, think. sometimes for other people's reasons. Yeah, sure. Right, right. Or like and your that's... parents' reasons or your culture's reasons, and mm. you yeah. don't really believe mm. in them or trust sure. them or like them. Mm. Sure. And sure. what an interesting uh, what an interesting exercise in in helping one another get more clarity about that. Mm. So uh, the money, the yeah. hundred million. Yep. How do we use it? Yeah. So so uh, yes. How do we use it? Well, so yeah. I, think, I, I think the most practical, direct thing that let's 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 imagine that we got a grant. Yeah. That's a good way to think of it. So let's let's say we got a grant uh, that gave us you know a, a, a large chunk of money, and we had to actually practically use it now. And what we had to you... say what we were going to use it for, because yeah. otherwise we wouldn't get the grant. Good. That's good. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So what, what would we be? Write? What would be so so we've got we've got these like core level values, these large visions that we've just talked about. But mm -hmm. what are the and, and, and uh, those are important. We can come back to those maybe in a little bit. But what are, okay. what is the practical? What would you guys say is the practically next step 
you would do if we right, right. had to write a grant proposal or we got a grant and we could use that money immediately what would be the next step i mean if we could if we could back up we could ask the question what are the necessary components required for us to be able to realize the vision that we have Good. Uh, and i would i would say the necessary components are something you were in, in before josh is that we need okay. we need the human the human abilities to be able to yep. support this. We yep. don't. We don't. Right now, Life Exam doesn't necessarily need a, a a main office. It doesn't need a printing press. Uh, it doesn't need all these sort of things. I mean, it's it's quite yeah. fluid at this point. But what yeah. Life Exam does need is is good, qualified people who can yeah. organize, who can structure, who can take care of finances, who can yeah. do research and prepare and set the scene. Yeah. Uh, and I would say, yeah. if, if I were going to ask for money for a grant, I would try to invest in, in, in the, the human power that would then be able to, yeah. to catapult life exam to the next level. Well, Good. I, another thing that I would do is I would uh, make sure we, uh, together, uh, in this sort of thinking out loud philosophical collective, thing that we do, uh, we would put together, um, uh, we would make something like a method or a concept or something, something like like a service that we can bring to people, mm. you know? I, de develop, I to develop that. that. Yeah, I, develop yeah, develop, yeah, developing, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so set aside um, time to develop that, like mm. use the money so that we can pay our rent and buy food while we are developing this. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it sounds like you, you guys are both uh, saying quite similar things, right? Uh, that that using using that grant to put into human resources exactly to do those kind of things to develop a course that we could offer yeah. to organizations, or to develop you know this, right? And and you want to develop that, and and but in order to do that, you need the time to be able to do it. You need money to be able to to spend that time, and then we need to also bring other people in. Mm -hmm. We absolutely need a finance person. We need an administrator. We need an events, uh, an events. Um, what do you call it? A project manager, basically. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, people, pe people with a drive for wisdom. Right. Yeah, but we also need we also need the practical. <laughs> uh, yes. the wisdom and wisdom and, and practical are connected, but but we but we need there's different parts. People mm. have different skills, and right. uh, <laughs> some skills some skills we don't have at all. Uh, mm. and we need mm. people to have those skills. <laughs> And, and here's, here's something I think extremely important, actually absolutely necessary, um, that is really hard to sell when you're getting a grant. And it's really hard to sell if we are thinking su uber practically minded. Yeah. And that's what we were in, in on before, is that uh, using resources to create a space, to give yeah. time and a space in which to explore. I mean, as, as we all know, good research requires a good amount of time because you're inevitably going to follow um, a massive number of rabbit trails yeah. that don't seem to lead anywhere. Um, yeah. Those may end up being really important in the end, but good research requires a good amount of time and, and the ability to, to brainstorm and to explore. And, and I think having a core yeah. value of uh, life exam should be built upon the idea of brainstorming and exploration. Um, to to build that into the structure, mm. that's pretty crazy. But there's there's companies like 3M in Minnesota who are mm. have seen the value of this mm. of of yeah. having groups of brainstormers on staff. Their whole job is to get together yeah. and to just come up with crazy ideas. Several yeah. hours a week. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's yeah. fantastic. Uh, I think more organizations need that, and I think that should be a, a central pillar on which life exam and rest is this idea of creating space for exploration. That's and hard, to, that's hard to sell to <laughs> people when you're asking for money because it sounds yeah. very um, um, all over the place. But yeah. I think that's such an important value, especially given what life exam wants to do with interactive philosophy. Yeah. So and imagine we could we could we could think of a method to brainstorm effectively. Or effectively, like to use the word effective in the new novel philosophical ways, <laughs> like not necessarily product oriented. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but uh, like depth and dimension mm. oriented. But now you see, you see <laughs> yeah. the challenge of what we're doing here is we're we're trying to redefine what we mean by productive, by yes. effective. Uh, yeah. We're trying to redefine what we mean by philosophy. Mm. Uh, and, and and this is sort of new to people, oh, and that's why it's so I, important that we we talk yes. about these things. So yeah. I think one. Thing that we've talked about a number of times before is that uh, live interactive philosophy and we want to take philosophy out of the university 
and bring it into daily life. Not and to kill it, not to kill not, it. We no, not to kill it. Not, not, not abs absolutely. But, but I think there's, there's an important uh, thing here that, that reminds me. I had a discussion with a um, professor who is in, um, in the UK, and he talked about how the UK higher educational system is, is in, in a bit of a, a mess at the moment. One of the reasons why is because of this uh, neoliberal idea that is in the UK that is that has come into the higher educational system which means that everything is based on evidence-based uh, measurements that show its effectiveness in terms of improving the economy right, right? And so 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 the, the the university is is becoming is is be being strangled mm -hmm. in a way right in in terms of not allowing for there to be space to be creative with something that might go in any right. direction because that's yeah. not evidence-based right. a point system that shows right. you that you're improving the economy and we want to do exactly that and in a way we want to take we want to take the the some aspects of philosophy out of the university not not to kill the university but to give exactly that kind of space for right. human flourishing human development right not just economic development right to try and free philosophy from the the tyranny of quantification yeah yeah that's well said uh, i mean i remember when i was when i was teaching i mean i remember that it was it was so it was so important that we had to quantifiably show the value of our, of our courses and that always struck me as is so uh, wrong-headed in some sense because it's it's very difficult to quantify the existential development of your students uh, but that's really I think that's that's the important thing that we are trying to do uh, and that's something that's hard to sell in a, in a world that is obsessed with quantification but it's something that is so desperately needed in a world that is obsessed with quantification and the world is changing and we're part of this change yeah yeah and well, also yeah. with philosophy with philosophy I mean there's enough of philosophy uh, to be both in university and outside you is nothing will happen to philosophy if we take it out no I mean, there's enough to go around for everyone <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, and, that's, and that's hopefully the idea is that there will be a nice dialogue between the two. I mean, of course, we're all trained um, philosophers. I mean, we've all been through the academy, right? Uh, and the idea is hopefully that, that Life Examine will be able to engage with people and train people to then be able to go into the academy as well and to bring the insights of, of a more existential folk, focused philosophy into what is uh, oftentimes more um, less existentially focused. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just thinking what one one other thing on, on that line, although we've gotten kind of away from talking about what yeah, we a little actually bit. <laughs> do with money. <laughs> one other thing along that line is to think that oftentimes the the educational system as just because we're talking about education, the educational system as a whole is in a it, it's it, it's it's ripe for being disrupted, <laughs> to put it in in entrepreneurial terms, right? I mean like like it's a system that's been the same way for a very long time. And it is not attuned to the way that the current market is. So if we do want to talk about the economic side, right? Right. People need a kind of training that actually prepares them for what they're going to be facing. And what they're not facing is a lifelong career in a particular area. What they're right. facing is changing their job every two, three years right. and doing something new and doing something that has to be creative because more and more things are automated. And the, right. and the, right. the university system is not addressing that. But that's, yeah. But now we're, we're far away from talking about what we would actually do with money. But we're not really far away. I mean, there's no such thing as off topic. If we end up in this space, that's important. That's because it's important to us. And we need yeah. to talk. Mm. That's part of, part of the core. But, but hey, actually, maybe, maybe this is a good way to wrap everything up. To go back sure. to yeah. something we talked yeah. about at the very beginning, um, uh, Matt, that you, you mentioned, uh, that oftentimes organizations, they just continue uh, by inertia. Right. So if we if we get money into life examined, we don't want it to just balloon us as a, as a bureaucracy or as an organization that just sort of continues by inertia. We want it to do something effective with respect to our goals and our vision and our values. But I think the key thing about that is that our the core values that drive us should be something that is bigger than life examined. So right. if that is met, we should be happy for life examined to die. So if right. people in general, if the if the mm, world becomes mm, a place where mm, mm. people are take it for granted that philosophical practice is part of their well-being, right. well right. then then life examined doesn't have 
a, an aim anymore, and it should die, and we should do something else, right? But right. so, so that's there's a, a value that's a beautiful that beautiful way to think us, of it. Yeah, drives us more than just the organization itself. Absolutely, that's a great way to think about it. Yeah, that we have an understanding of what it means to be of people and what it means to be a person mm. as something that is uh, what's the word again? Anti fragile, like a yes. muscle that would actually it's, die if it isn't yeah. used. Yes, you know? it will wither and die. So. So if uh, so, life examined will be this too. It's also an anti-fragile thing. Yeah, we need to do something with it all the time. You know? Yeah. So that's that should be the new vision for life examined. Our vision is to work so hard that life examined is no longer necessary. <laughs> that's yeah. Nice. yeah. What will you do when life examined isn't necessary? Uh, well. Matt or Josh. Yeah. That's well. a beautiful. That's a beautiful <laughs> idea, though. I like that. Yeah. I like that. That which I think should apply to. All organizations and everything we do, because it, in the end, it doesn't. It's not about us. It's not about our sustenance. It's about the vision, about reaching others. When others are doing yeah. well, we're also doing well. So it's a it's a collective communal effort as well. Good. Is is that a good place to tie us off, Miriam? Or what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I'll see if I have some ending things that I want to. Oh. Yeah, like the, the phrase apomalia here too comes up, the care of the self, mm. uh, care, and the uh, epimalia means care of, but also exercising or training. Mm. Um, again, the anti-fragile. Um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that uh, for me, for me personally, I'll just go back to myself now. Mm. <laughs> for me personally, life examined uh, is mm. this, it's, it's how I how I exercise and take care of myself. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why I'm part of Life Examined. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Exercise your 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 whole self. My whole self, yeah. Don't point to your head. It's like the well, no. The whole... the, I, w I was I was pointing to the whole <laughs> self. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. Okay. Or laughs> the whole self yeah, in the, the limited whole, frame the, of the your screen. Presence yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. yeah. Although we we haven't done any live interactive philosophy that includes like you know push-ups or or sit-ups not yet no, but it, they include the body they do include we're the body we've sitting, talked about yeah. the body yeah yeah and the and and the sort of like um just the presence of the uh mm. whole person body the mm. body energy and you know everything so that's yeah. all that's always there in the live events but i think yeah. what you what you said miriam is really good that that it might be easy to think that what we're doing in life examined is trying to uh, fulfill a project that we're interested in, uh, but I think life examined is interesting in that it is it's both self oriented and other oriented at the same time, and those two do not need to be kept separate because, uh, as we've said over and over again, that that as others develop, we develop as well as we develop, others develop as well, and that's the nature of inter communication of the dialogical aspect of what we're doing. Uh, so it's it's a it's a beautiful vision where everybody grows together through interactive live dialogical philosophy, and that gives me a, a lot of hope. Together and emerge together, mm. right? Yeah, nice, absolutely. <laughs> oh, cool. Wait, uh, I think yeah, I think that's our first video, right? I think that's good. All right, guys, yeah. well, that sounds good. We can uh, we can wrap it up there then. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for today, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Cool.